Okay. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Morning. <laughs> my name is Daniel. I'm one of the co-founders of Civic Square. And it's my pleasure today to um, welcome you all to our Neighbourhood Donut Portrait and um, Report launch. And I've got all the children, some of the children from the neighbourhood that we've been working with to help welcome you all today. Um, the last couple of days we've been doing a little activity where everyone's been making their banners to, to welcome guests to our to our neighbourhood and I'm just going to um, let them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about why they love living here and what um, their hopes and dreams are. So I'm going to start with Jeevan, who's right here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jeevan. I am excited to welcome you today. I love my neighbourhood because I cycle, but there are too many cars. Let's not fall in the old land. Protect the planet with the donut. Have a lovely day. Hello, my name is Anad. I love the neighbourhood because there are lots of bikes. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Gurdas. I'm seven years old. I would like people in the neighbourhood to be more creative. And creativity isn't just drawing. It's many different things. There's so much that I don't really have time to tell you them. I'm Clara, I'm 10, and um, I moved here not too long ago, and I really like how, like, everybody can, like, welcome everybody else into the community. Hello. My hopes for uh, the floating front room, um, I, wa I wish... Um, that there were more places like the floating front room so more people could connect together. Um, more people could connect together and there could be more um, awareness and uh, there could be more freedom for people and there could be more oneness in the world. My name's Rihanna and I'm 10 years old. All I want is people to keep our planet safe and have donuts. They're very nice. Hi, my name is Roland and um, we, it's just good that this community is welcoming everyone and how you get free donuts. Thank you so much, children. Can I have a massive, another round of applause for all of these guys? Okay, you can go take your seats. All right. Thank you. So, on the screen you see 100,000 welcomes. I just wanted a quick show of hands. How many of, pe of you guys have come from outside of Birmingham? Most of the room. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this sign, if you came in by coach, you may have seen this sign. Um, and it was the kind of experience that we wanted to create the, for you this morning. So I hope you feel 100,000 welcomes in the room. Um, and so I'm guessing by that number, of people that raise their hand. How many of you is the first time in Ladywood? Okay. I just wanted to say a little thing about this, this here statue. It's just over the road from here. And it says, welcome to Ladywood. And it's actually a statue of a French um, daredevil <laughs> who apparently in the 1800s, he came to Ladywood and tightrope walked across the reservoir the Edge Bastard Reservoir, which is not far from here. And we included him in our little visuals about the donut, unrolling the donut. Um, and we just thought it was an interesting metaphor for this idea of the balance that we have to find and that thriving between people and planet and that balance that we need to find. And also, in order to walk a tightrope, you have to hold tensions there are tensions to be held in order for the tightrope to 
be able to even be walked across. And so that's why we included this into the the the, the visuals. But we, we were thinking about this a lot as we was talking about um how we have to hold a lot of tensions in our work across lots of different things in order to, for it to all kind of be held together. And so I just wanted to place that thought um, in the room this morning before we continue with the proceedings. And if you go out of the building and you see these statues, continue to think about that. Um, we are here in Ladywood, down scaling the donut to a neighborhood scan. And we're one of the first places to attempt to do this. Um, and so and there are, there's a lot of things in the space, in the different areas, in the different rooms that um, you'll be able to explore today. Um, and it represents the kind of, as much as possible, the different aspects of the work that we've been doing at Civic Square here in Ladywood as well. We have a video snapshot that's been prepared by a local film company called Iconic Productions. And Sam Lockyer, I don't know, is Sam, are you in the room? Yeah, behind the camera over there. Um, we're about to share that video. Um, just to give you a little overview of the work that we've been doing. What is the economy for? We've inherited a mindset that tells us the goal is growth, endless growth. But actually we can start all over again and say, what if the goal of the economy is to meet the needs of all people within the means of the living planet? And so I wrote a book called Donut Economics, which brings together the very best of all the economics I was never taught. They're amazing ideas to draw on from generations from around the world. And if we bring those ideas together, they bring us insights into new ways of thinking and acting and doing. And if we can put those at the heart of recreating our economies, redesigning them, we give ourselves a really strong chance of turning this story around. So it's November 2021, second co-creation week. It's also the week of COP26, one of our last chances to really shift our relationship to the natural world. And I know that a lot of communities are feeling very excluded. So much of what supports that nation state decision-making has to be deep, participatory, radical, connected, collaborative work at a neighborhood scale. So this week, we have been really focusing on how we take the ideas off the pages of books like Donut Economics. We've had worms, art, snow, hail, storms. We've had neighborhood science. We've been in venues all across the neighborhood. I like to come because it's quiet. I get to learn new information and meet new people. We get to socialize and have fun as well. We've had people of all ages looking under microscopes, drawing, going to manga workshops, going on workshops, workshops, visiting zero carbon homes, learning from histories, as well as dreaming about futures on foot, on wheels. Virtually, it's been just incredible. So the idea of the peer-to-peer -peer learning journey is to create the space, the tools, people being able to take on these complex ideas, teach each other as they go, so they bring their own embodied experience into the journey and come out of it with the energy and the support to bring them to life. So we're at the Regenerative Neighbourhoods Festival, part of the Learning Journey Peer-to-Peer -peer Showcase. So we've got people coming in to host talks, we've got panels going on, we have an exhibition of people's projects that they've been working on for the past six months. We've got food, we've got music. The first thing that all of the Civic Square people were saying was that actually, you are enough as you are right now, all of your experiences are enough, and they have that kind of oversight of what everybody is doing. So it might be that actually, well, there's some people in Dudley and some people in London both interested in food co-ops, bringing those people together as well and facilitating that. The Centre for Alternative Technology is an, an educational charity. Our mission is to inform and enable humanity to address the climate crisis. Retrofitting is such a crucial issue and we are seeing that issue become more apparent than ever with the current energy crisis. So seeing groups like Civic Square take it upon themselves to retrofit their own neighbourhood is quite incredible. We're offering them as much support as we can with that. We developed our own retrofitting masterclass recently 
The most effective approach is to start from a grassroots bottom-up direction and then that way you get genuine buy-in into the work and you get a lot more resilience in the long term because people understand what is happening, why it's happening. We're looking at making our houses more efficient and a healthier place to live and a lot of my work is about basically retrofitting so they want to use some of my skills that I've gained training people up. The dream is in 2023 that we yeah, have a whole street that is deeply retrofitted together and we can show how this could happen across the country and across neighbourhoods everywhere. There is this sort of growing kind of field of, of, of change of practitioners and communities. These are all people that every day are out there living a different reality and trying to help build and shape it in their local place. These ideas could have ripple outs to, to all kinds of places beyond you know, what we here could imagine. It's one initiative amongst a kind of set of initiatives that together tell a really different story of what's possible. We've got a long way to go and we've got some very big challenges ahead of us, but what we know is that we have the solutions. We know how to do it. We just need to get on and do it. So that gives me hope. I feel hopeful, I feel optimistic. I feel like you can contribute something. And when you're surrounded by environments like this and people like this, you have to be hopeful. Yeah, I think good things are gonna happen. It's good.